I've been consistently making money trading for a couple of years now, and just like everybody else, I go through downtimes, drawdowns, and just overall dark times in my trading. Now today, somebody in the mentorship call asked me how do I handle these drawdown periods? How do I handle these dark times? And so I thought that I would share with you the recording of my answer because I think that it is very educational and I think that it could potentially have a larger impact on a lot of traders. Now this video is pretty much just audio. There's not much video elements to it. So this video can be listened to almost like a podcast if you're doing something else and you just want to listen to something in the background or maybe as you're going to bed for the night. Whatever it may be, this video is not really meant to be watched, it's meant to be listened to. And for that reason, I will not interrupt throughout the entire video. So before the actual audio part of this begins, I want to mention that if you like the way that I teach, if you like anything that I am saying, go ahead and join the Discord down in the description. There's also a Patreon there if you would like to sign up. It is not required, and even if you don't sign up for the Patreon, you may still want to stay in the Discord because I host frequent giveaways. Now, with all that being said, here's the conversation I had in mentorship about how I handle the dark times in trading. What was one of my down points this year? Um, I think it was this year. And by the way, the trading is, it's almost 7.30, so something might pick up here, but uh, the, I've just been back and forth on the market today. I might, I might even walk away, but um, I believe it was this year. I had a, I had a week, my worst week in all of my futures trading so far was a break even week. Um, no, it, I was down one R. <laughs> so it was a one R losing week. And, um, uh, how did I turn around from it? I did absolutely nothing. I just did the same shit. <laughs> I think a lot of people get this confused where like, if your performance dips or you go into any sort of drawdown or something, you have to dramatically change something. No, 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 no. It, it's probabilities. It's, it's just the way it is. Sometimes you're in a bad, sometimes you're in a bad streak. Sometimes you're in a losing streak. Sometimes you're in anything, but the best thing you could do is continue doing the exact same thing with no changes at all. Um, because if your edge is solid, and your risk management is solid and everything's solid, it'll the probabilities will eventually play out in your favor. Um, but you start changing shit around, well, that's where you get into trouble. But I think a lot of traders, they, they go into like a, they go into like a three trade losing streak or like a, two or three day losing streak. And then they just, they just change up everything. Um, and they fuck themselves over big time. Um, as some of, some of the boys in here who have been in here for a long time, this live trading in a long time have, have seen like, I mean, they, 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 they've seen a couple of those weeks where just nothing for me was working, nothing at all. And guess what I did? I came into the market. I did the exact same thing every day. Nothing changed. Nothing. I'm not going to change absolutely anything about my trading at all if I'm in a losing streak or if I'm in a period of drawdown. Nothing is changing. Because you start changing shit up, you're, you're fucking up your edge. Think think about trading as you're a casino owner, right? Imagine you're a casino owner and somebody comes into your casino and they win for a week, right? They come in, they win money for a week straight. Are you as a casino owner going to go and change the rules of the games that you have and go tweak the slot machines and go change the rules of blackjack <laughs> are you gonna go fuck up the odds no that would be fucking retarded of you that would be stupid you're gonna fuck up everything you're gonna go out of business you're gonna you're gonna ruin your edge the only thing you could do is just keep doing the same exact thing if a player comes in and wins for a week it just means they won for a week that's the probabilities playing out but guess what over 52 weeks, a whole year, they're not going to win every single time. <laughs> You're going to come out profitable because you actually have an edge. It's the same thing with trading. So the best thing to do when you're in a drawdown or you're in a rut is to do fucking nothing. To do the exact same thing that you're actually you're doing anyways. If you have a real edge. Now, if you don't have an established edge and, you know, things like that, um, you might you might consider actually changing some shit up but if you have an established edge you know works do absolutely nothing if you're in a rut 
It would take me a month of bad trading for me to even consider changing anything. <laughs> no, these things take time. You have to give time for probabilities to play out. Uh, you, your edge doesn't crumble in a week. Just because something's not performing well for a week or a couple days doesn't mean um, it's all over. And you're in like this catastrophic failure. It just means uh, she just wasn't performing that week. It is what it is. Uh, now, if that continues for like a month, two months, three months, very long periods of time, okay, maybe something is wrong. Maybe you need to reevaluate your edge. But so that, that's what I would say about that. Um, and you kind of know when you're in your down streaks too. Like you kind of know when you're in your bad. Like you know. Everybody knows. Every trader knows when they're when they're in a bad streak and when they're in a good spot. Um, and when I know I'm in a bad week, guess what I do? I don't trade. <laughs> I become extremely reserved. Some of the boys in here who've been here for a long time will tell you, man. And if I if I'm losing for like the first day of the week, the second day of the week, and it's like the market's choppy and it's not doing anything, guess what, man? I will sit here for four hours and do nothing for the remainder of the week. I'll just wait for the absolute perfect trades. I'll be way more defensive on my stop losses. I'll take what I could get with very, very... Um, I'll revert from trailing stops to just taking easiest targets instead just to take something out of the market if I even do take a trade, which is going to be much rarer because I know that I'm in a bad spot and I know the market's in a bad spot, so I'm not going to push myself when I'm in a bad spot um, mentally. Or if the market's not in a good condition, I'm not going to push myself either. Um but it's just managing. But that's what these live trading sessions are great for. Um, you know, I love when I win. <laughs> it's more exciting when I'm winning. Um, but days like this where, like, take a, take, take a day like this, like, almost before the session, I said, I think we'll probably run up. But for the first half of the session, I thought we were going to go on the slope. The low didn't get ran. For the next half of the session, I think that we're going to move up. We have been moving up since then, but like I haven't been able to execute on it. I haven't been able to trade on it. Um, I took a loss. Uh, I took a small win, whatever. Like, but like my idea hasn't been like super hitting yet. Nothing has really happened. And guess what? I'm, I'm break even, completely break even. I'm down point three R. Why is that? Be notice, notice what I've done. I noticed myself getting thrown around. I noticed myself getting chopped around. And what have I done since then? I haven't rushed into trades. I haven't chased the market. I haven't tried to trade more. I haven't pushed myself when I know I'm not doing great. I became defensive. I, I turned around. I said, well, the market's not doing what I want, so I'm not going to participate. <laughs> Hell no. What the fuck? <laughs> um, you become very defensive. I'm not going to trade. I'm not going to do this. And, but then you'll see also... On days where the market is doing what I want, I will push that to the absolute max. That's the days where, where I'll, um, I'll, I'll be taking way more positions, uh, trailing much more aggressively. I'll be going much more harder. I'll be much more locked in. I'll be much more focused. Um, but small things like that are, are parts of longevity that that is very very critical in in, in, tr in trading if you want a long career in this because you are going to go period. You're, it's inevitable you're going to go through periods where shit is just not, it feels like shit is just not working. Um, and you know you're going through that period and you have to be defensive. You have to be laid back. You can't be trying to push yourself. You can't be trying to push trades. You have to sit there and let it happen. <laughs> don't, don't lose money. Don't tilt. Like, I'm not going to tilt. I, on a day like this, I'm never going to lose more than one R. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to take a full losing day on a bad day. You got me fucked up. <laughs> you, your full losing day should be on the best days. Because at least then you risk the money on a day where price action was actually good. If price action wasn't doing what you thought it was going to do, how the hell are you going to take a full losing day? That means you just, you just risked a shit ton of money on a day where you knew price action was bad. Why the hell are you risking trades? It doesn't make any sense. Um, the small things like that. Um, but, but I, I, to answer your question, that, that is, if there, and I know I'm kind of ranting, but <laughs> I'm very prone to ranting, but nothing's really happening in the market that I really care about right now. Um, that's, uh, that's how I deal with downtimes. 
in my trading. I don't do anything at all except get a little bit more defensive. Uh, go quicker with my break evens. Uh, maybe I just don't trade. Um, I take a step back. Uh, maybe I I lessen my focus a little bit, like I am now. Like instead of like being like locked in, like focused on what's happening right now. Well, this whole day the market hasn't been exactly doing what I wanted it to. So why am I going to be doing that? I'm not going to push myself right now. I'll take something if it if it extremely stands out, but. No, I'm not going to be as locked in right now because the market hasn't been doing what I wanted it to do. So I'm not I'm just not going to participate in it. Why would I? That would be that would be uh, that would be foolish. Um That would be absolutely foolish. But that that's how I handle downtimes. And in real life, real life downtimes how I handle that shit, I don't trade at all. Like if I'm going through something in real life that's affecting me, I just don't, I just don't trade at all. Um, if I have a headache in the morning, I don't trade. <laughs> if I fucked up my arm and I'm in extreme pain, I don't trade. If I have a stomach ache in the morning, I don't trade. If I, if I feel too tired, I don't trade. <laughs> um, I'm not here to trade. I think that's a, something you really have to get into your brain as a trader. Your, your job as a trader is not to take trades. Um, at all, your job as a trader is to sit down and manage your risk correctly on good opportunities. Um, not any opportunity, good opportunities. When you're feeling good, uh, you're waiting for things to come to you. You're not trying to go to things. I'm not trying to take trades. Trades need to show themselves to me. If they don't show themselves to me, I don't take them. Uh, you're, you're, I used this analogy before. I think Marcus likes this analogy a lot, but you're uh, you're a fisherman. That's what you are as a day trader. You're not <laughs> you're not a spear fisher, right? You're like you're casting from a shore. You're not a spear fisher. You're not jumping into the river, swimming to the fucking fish and killing it. No, you're sitting on the bank. You're throwing your line in, and you're sitting back and fucking relaxing until something bites. <laughs> I'm not looking for trades. I need the trades to look for me. I don't even want to trade. I don't care about trade. I don't even care about getting in a trade. I don't, I don't care at all. The only thing I care about is, can I manage my risk correctly? Uh, can I not lose more than I want to lose? Yes or no? Um, and if the answer is no, then I, I've completely, something went completely wrong. Um, but, but my only and single and only goal on a day-to-day -day basis is, can I um can I just not lose more than I want to lose? And if I can, it's a good day. Um but notice that that has nothing to do with trading. <laughs> There's no requirement in that that's you need to be in a trade or the market needs to work or your TA needs to work or you need to be right about the market. No, that that has no importance to me at all. Yeah, you gotta buy you a fishing rod, brother. But it's the same thing with the fishermen, right? Like, like if if you notice that a lot of fish are biting and, and things are kind of working for you, what are you gonna do? You're probably gonna stand up out of your chair. You're probably instead of like sitting back and relaxing, you're probably gonna stand up. You're probably gonna try a little bit harder. You're probably gonna cast more. You're probably gonna push harder on it. But if it's real slow and nothing's happening and your your line's been out there for a while, you're getting no bites. And it's just not really playing out how you want it to. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to sit back in your chair. You're going to fucking fuck off. You're <laughs> Maybe you'll fall asleep. I don't know. <laughs> but you're definitely not going to be trying to be aggressive. You'd be wasting your energy. If nothing was happening and it, it just wasn't going as you wanted to and you weren't getting enough bites, you're not going to sit there and be aggressive with it. It's the same thing with trading. It's the same exact thing in trading. You should push yourself when things are happening and you should... You should really, really become defensive when things are not. Um, and that that's how you achieve longevity in this game. I mean, paired with good risk management. But, which is why I love this live trading shit. What, it's been like six, seven months now? People have seen me uh, trade consistently, profitably for six, seven months straight. Seen bad weeks seen bad days, 
seen amazing days, seen amazing weeks, seen okay days, seen shitty days, he's <laughs> seen absolutely nothing happen on a day, seen the most things happen on a day. You've seen me um, given to emotions a couple times, like two or three times during that seven month period um, and how I handle that. But that's why I love these live trading sessions because it's it's not about the individual session. It's about the period of time. Um, and I'm trying to instill habits into people. I, I, the whole point about these live trading sessions is not to sit here and be like, look how much money I'm making. Look how good of a trader I am. Copy my trades or anything like that. No, absolutely not. The whole point of these live trading sessions is to, to hopefully, through the process of you watching somebody who is consistent and who has done this for a long time, and who has continued to be consistent for months and months, and at this point, years on end, um, hopefully you could pick up habits from that. You could pick up small things from that. How is this person staying consistent? Because I run into the same problems you do. I have the same emotions you do. <laughs> I have the same want to FOMO that you do. I have the same want to tilt that you do. Trust me, whenever I take a losing trade, man, I, the first thing that pops up in my head is I should over leverage. I should risk more. <laughs> I need to make my money back. Do I act on that? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, you know, when I start losing, do I push that? No, I get defensive. How many times have I taken a full losing day in that seven months? I could probably count on both hands. Like less than 10 times in the entire seven months, I think I've had a, a full losing day. Why? Because when I take one loss and I understand that I'm not doing that well and I understand the market condition is off, I stop trading. I'm not pushing myself. Hell no. You got me fucked up. <laughs> Hell no. But that's part of that's part of longevity in trading, which is something you could only get over time. Right? Something you could only get over time. You can't you can't be profitable for three weeks and then say I'm a profitable trader and I've done this forever because there, there's plenty of people who have been profitable for a year straight and then just fallen off a cliff and you'll never see them again because they've they give into something at one point and trading is one of those things where if I wanted to right now you know <laughs> I'm 10 seconds away from losing my entire career all I would have to do is move my right move my mouse right open up a hundred contracts on NASDAQ and press like buy and then just let it go and I'm gonna get it liquidated and my career is over I'm like 10 seconds away from that at any given time um, of course <laughs> I have a couple more trading accounts I would have to do that in all of my trading accounts but then boom it's gone um, which is why it's so important to focus on longevity because you have to have a really, really solid foundation. Otherwise, these problems are going to follow you. Um, and you don't want to be one of those people who were successful for a year. And then one of your problems catches up to you and you blow up. You don't want that to happen. That's like that's like a fate worse than just failing in the first place. Because you, at that point, you got to taste the success. And then it's taken away from you because one of your old problems came back to bite you. Um, and you're, you're fucked. <laughs> you're absolutely fucked at that point. Yeah, I don't know, man. I know your question, <laughs> your question, go, uh, what's your name? Uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> go kiss was not about anything. You, you'll come to find I'm very prone to ranting about shit, but, uh, uh, I think it's a good conversation to have. Like I said, there's nothing on the charts that I'm really caring about right now. Um, uh, and I think stuff like this is, is important. It's not a good selling point. I can't put this out and be like, guys, learn to trade. Um, and a lot of times you're going to be, you know, in these bad states, this shit is going to be working. This is how you handle it. But it's also real. <laughs> it's also very real. that This is the reality of trading. It's not, it's not always... Um, sunshines and rainbows the sunshines and rainbows uh they're very vivid rainbows and it's very bright sunshine but she gets dark <laughs> you have to you have to you have to know how to use a fucking flashlight you know what i mean <laughs> otherwise you're just gonna fuck yourself over
but, but but it's a reason I, I barely, barely, barely ever go into big drawdowns. It's a reason I I uh, uh I capitalize so much on my winning days and I and I almost never really lose big on my losing days ever. Um it, it's a reason why I'm able to be so patient. It's, a, it's because I've gone through all this shit. I I've made every mistake you can make like 10 times. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um I know I know how this shit goes if you if you start fucking up. I do that all the time, man. Like, like even today, like I, I would be lying if I said like, oh, what you take a loss? Yeah, I get a little bit annoyed. Oh, I get break even and it goes where I want to go. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating. Um, I take a loss. Yeah, now I want to over leverage and make my money back. But it's it's rules you have to have in place for yourself. You have to, and the di the discipline to follow that is important. Otherwise, you're just gonna blow up. I mean, you're just you're just gonna become another statistic. That's what it is. I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be that. I don't know about you, but, but, but at the root of it, at the root of most mental issues in training, it's just having control of your mind, which is for everything in life, right? Now, listen, I'm a, I'm a 20 year old kid, bro. I don't, I don't fucking know everything about life, but I'll tell you one thing. Um, you don't have control over anything. <laughs> You don't have control over the weather. You don't have control over if your trading day is going to be good. You don't have control if that one guy is going to do this one thing or follow through on a promise. You don't have control over anything. You don't have control if you're going to wake up and have a heart attack and fucking die. You don't have control if you're going to walk down the hallway and trip and stub your toe and fucking fall on your face and die. I don't know, bro. You can do anything. You don't have control over literally anything in life except your thoughts and, and your emotions and how you think. And, but the problem is most people cannot control the one thing they have control of, which is their mind. If you can't control your mind, you're just a bitch to yourself and you're just going to fail in anything you do. Um, you're going to fail in anything you do. It's not just trading. You want to be successful in business. You want to be successful in anything. You have to have control over your mind. Um, but, but it's just magnified in trading. But if you can't, if you can't control your mind, it's the only thing you have control of, then you're, you're just a useless fucking human at that point. You can't do shit. Because at that point, you literally have control over fucking nothing. Do you feel any kind of pressure when trading while streaming? Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't go off and do some crazy shit. Um, like, I, for the whole, like, seven or eight months I've been live trading, I've only made one risk management error. The entire time. And it was, I believe it was April of 2023. It was back when I was still trading Asia session. It was just me and Marcus in the call. And I had taken two losses and I took one more trade. Um, I immediately exited that trade. But that was the last time I broke a risk management rule. It was April 2023. Um, and since then, I haven't broke a single rule in terms of risk management or my loss limits, or the times of day that I trade, or anything since a April 2023. Um, and I was pissed off at myself in April 2023 when I did that. I, I immediately exited the trade. It didn't, nothing came from it, but I was mad at myself because that's the type of shit that could get you in the future. You let those things slip, but you have to move on from it. So I think there is a pressure in the sense of if you're if I'm streaming like I can't just break down you know what I mean like, I can't just tilt on a live stream in front of people it can't like I can't you know what I mean like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I can't just take a lot it would be funny but then it would be fucked like I can't, I can't say here like oh boys I just took a loss you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take it I'm just gonna take 10 more losses in a row that would I can't do that anyways, but it would, it's even more amplified if I'm in a live stream. It, it, I think it does make you trade better. Um, I think it does make you trade better. I, I went back and forth on this for a long time. Uh, in the beginning, I thought it made me trade worse because um, I felt that pressure. But in the beginning, I felt pressure to like never lose, which was a very toxic way to think about it because I was like, I have to, I have to be like this crazy 
amazing trader all the time, blah, blah, blah. But as time has went on, I've kind of realized that that's not what this live trading is about. Again, like I said, this live trading is about showing everything about trading. Um, the best days, the worst days, the most average days, break even days, days where I get annoyed, days where I'm upset, days where shit just works, everything. That's what this live trading is about. And so the pressure to always win kind of went away, but uh, there is a pressure to follow my fucking rules. <laughs> There's a much bigger pressure to follow my rules because I'm streaming. I will say that. I would follow them anyways, but because I'm live streaming, it's it's much harder for me to make a mistake in that regard because it's in front of people. Um, and <laughs> you just look like a fucking idiot. Like how would how would I be sitting here talking about all this stuff that I just talked about, and then tomorrow I log on and do some dumb shit where I like over leverage and risk trades, <laughs> or like just over trade or like force myself with a boy to do some crazy shit? Um, <laughs> you look like an idiot. You look like a complete idiot. Um, so yeah, there, there's some pressure there, but. Like I said, I've just kind of, I've really rooted in what I want out of this live trading. Um, a lot of people come from the YouTube shorts and they're like, oh, look at this guy. He's just showing wins and stuff like that. And that's probably what the live trading is. It's probably wins all the time. And he, he's calling out trades to all these people and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what it is. That's a false version of what it is. Those YouTube shorts are strictly promotion. I hate making them. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> I think they're borderline cringe, but they get a lot of views. I don't know why. They're like the only pieces of content that get any views. Um, and there's kind of a good to an evil. I have to get views to get people. And I have to get people to help people. Um, so I have to do the YouTube shorts. Um, <laughs> but under the surface of the YouTube shorts and the flashy shit, uh, I'm trying to show people how to actually trade here, right? And that's why these live trading sessions are good. Like, I'm not just, I'm not here to prove anything to you. I make millions of dollars trading, millions of dollars. I'm 20 years old. I'm a multimillionaire. I, I've, I've beat the game. I could retire right now for the rest of my life and do fucking nothing. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I'm not here to tell you I'm the best trader in the world. I'm not here to tell you, look how good I am. Look how accurate I am. No, I'm here to try to show people how to actually trade, how to have longevity, how to stay in the markets for a long time and stay consistent and not lose your shit and not tilt, not go crazy. And, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, and I think that really narrowing down on the reason I'm doing this has helped the pressure to go away. Um, because now I don't feel pressure. Now it's just me. I'm just trading in front of people, trying to show people what good trading is. And sometimes in good trading, you take losses. Uh, you take you have bad weeks. You could be doing amazing trading and still have a bad week. It doesn't mean you're doing bad trading. It just means the probability is tilted in the favor of a bad week, and that is what it is. But if you were able to manage that, control your losses, and not tilt, not do anything stupid, then you did trade good. You absolutely traded good. On a day like this, where my idea was kind of so-so, uh, we did run into 325, um, we didn't really run into these lows, about here, once we started getting above this weekly, I said we would run into 325, that happened, I wasn't able to execute on shit, but uh, it was kind of sloppy, I took a loss, I, overall, I'm, I am down for the day, I'm down 0.3R, doesn't mean anything, it was a good day, why, because I was able to control my losses, I was able to control my emotions, I was able to control everything, um, I didn't chase the move after I took a loss. I didn't I didn't do anything like that. That's what good trading is, and that's what I'm trying to get across to people. So I think that um to answer that pressure question, that's that's what I would say. I think really defining the reason I'm doing this is um has helped that pressure go away. Um because again, in the beginning I thought I had to prove something to the people in these calls, but I realized that's stupid. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to prove anything to anybody. I have nothing to prove to anybody. 
<laughs> Literally nothing. I, I've achieved every goal I've ever set. I don't I don't even have any more goals. That's like one of the biggest problems in my real life. I, there's no more goals left. I, my only goals I've ever had since I was young, very young, 16, 15 years old, was just make a lot of money. I've made a lot of money. Uh, there is no more goals for me. There's nothing I need to prove to anybody. Um, which is something else. Again, like I said, I think that's probably one of my biggest problems in real life now, trying to find purpose outside of a goal, a financial goal. Because financial goals lead to no no fulfillment, it seems. <laughs>